speaker. Dr. Amy Weatherby is with us, and so I'm going to invite her, um, and she is here, so I want to introduce her. She's also a phenomenal colleague and friend, and so she is a research professor in the Department of Clinical Sciences and Director of the Autism Institute in the College of Medicine at Florida State University. She is a fellow of the American Speech, Language, and Hearing Association and the Executive Director of the FSU Center for Autism and Related Disabilities and the project co-director of the Interdisciplinary Doctoral Leadership Training for Autism Researchers. She is the project director for the First Words Project, a longitudinal research investigation on early detection of autism spectrum disorder. Dr. Weatherby has extensive experience developing and implementing screening tools for autism and communication disorders in large population-based samples of children ages nine months to 24 months of age, she is the lead investigator of a randomized controlled trial that is part of the Emory Autism Center of Excellence to test the efficacy of teaching parents of infants with early signs of autism how to embed evidence-based intervention strategies into everyday activities. She's the co-developer of Autism Navigator, an innovative collection of tools and courses designed to bridge the gap between science and community practice using a highly interactive web platform with extensive video footage uh, to illustrate effective evidence-based practices. She is the lead PI on a multi-site health services research study using a new screening tool called the Early Screening for Autism and Communication Disorders, or the SMART ESAC which will have important implications for mobilizing communities to improve family action, participation and engagement in early screening and diagnosis of autism and other communication disorders and entry into early intervention. She is the PI on a new Autism Center of Excellence Action Network to blend clinical effectiveness and implementation of research designs to study individual and combined effects of two evidence-based interventions in real world settings. For the next 45 minutes, Dr. Weatherby will talk about how play develops in children. I also want to emphasize that, again, so much of what we do uh, together, and, and Dr. Weatherby and I are research collaborators in many ways, it's all about moving people with autism, children with autism, families with autism forward, right? The more that we can learn and grow and better understand how we develop and as we learn as humans, the better that we can do um, together. And so I think no matter where you're coming from today, as you're listening, as you're learning, that's what we're all doing. We all wanna better understand how we grow and as we develop. And so I'm so thankful uh, to have Dr. Weatherby as my friend, as my colleague, uh, both in research and as in innovation. And I think you are in for a treat to listen to her today and learn from her. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Weatherby as she walks you through how children develop in play Play, um, and how we can learn through that. So Dr. Weatherby, over to you. Okay, good morning. Thank you, Kristen, for such a beautiful introduction. That was very sweet. And back at you, ditto. Uh, so appreciate getting to know Kristen and working with her and getting to know the uh, ECHO Autism community, the team, and so delighted to be here with you. So I'm gonna be talking about the development of play. Um, and I'm going to focus on how it develops in typical children, but the, I think the important thing is the order of what the steps in the development of play, and we see those in children who have developmental delays or autism, but they're protracted, they're delayed. So you may see them uh, come in a little slower and slightly different combinations. Um, so the title, From Rattles to Blocks to House, Building a House. So how play develops in children. And I hope that you'll have fun with this presentation. Of course, I have to start with financial uh, disclosures. Um, so I'm employed at FSU, receive a salary. I also have grant funding to support research from the National Institutes of Health and the US Department of Education. And I'm author of the CSBS, which is a, an evaluation of communication and I receive royalties from that. Um, and I'll be showing a video snippet of the CSBS, so I want to mention that. And then I'm also author of Autism Navigator courses, and I'm owner of Autism Navigator LLC. I don't draw any salary from the company, and 100% of the profits are donated to a nonprofit to support our dissemination of the courses and tools to families. Uh, and I will be talking about Baby Navigator, which is a companion to uh, Autism Navigator. So, development of play. Um, it's fun to think about. There's a number of different frameworks that are very similar to this that, that use slightly different breakdowns, but the order of development is similar across 
framework. So I'm going to just use the terminology that I'm comfortable with, and I'll try to point out how it can vary as we get to each step. We're going to start at the very bottom. So from birth and the first six to nine months of life, children are their play is really uh, what we can call body play. They're exploring their body parts and uh, they're also repeating um, actions to create or continue sensations that they receive. And then uh, over the first six months, they gradually are able to bring objects toward them and to their mouth. So they're doing a lot of mouthing either of their fist, fingers or toys. And then they're exploring with their hands and feet and uh, they're uh, checking everything out in terms of the sensory motor exploration. Next, then children start to have object exploration. So these are going to build and accumulate and overlap. So object exploration is really starting in the first couple months of life when children can start to grab onto an object. They're not yet ready to release it. And uh, so then it builds into learning about the, the features of objects and what they can do. And so they usually will use repetitive actions. So they will repeat um, actions like banging and dropping. They don't just do it once, they do it a couple times to check out and see what happens. What do they hear? What do they see? So it's a visual, auditory, tactile event for them. And then this builds to learning how to use objects um, the word conventional is here and conventional meaning kind of a common use of objects, the usual use of objects. So they're learning from their object exploration how to um, use the physical features of the object. Um, and so they can do things like take out, put in. Uh, so they're understanding that objects are certain shapes and that will allow them to do certain actions with them and this then develops into functional actions where they're using the object functionally like you see in this picture um, using a spoon to put in their mouth uh, let's see i lost my um, advance there we go um, and so then they move into what we what you know again these have slightly different names but we just call it pretending towards other so the conventional functional actions that they've been able to do, they then start to bring these into pretend play. So while they could drink with a cup around 12 months, uh, 13, 14, 15 months, they're starting to pretend towards others, either a parent or another person nearby or stuffed animals. And then this moves into symbolic play. So there's kind of this transition from 12 to 24 months where children are moving into symbol use with objects. And by the end of the second year, in that 18 to 24 months, we should expect to see sequences of action. So this is showing a pretend play sequence, excuse me, sequence where this little boy is stirring and preparing food, and then he's going to feed big birds. So we see that sequence. And interestingly, same time in development, what we see with children's words, as they're starting to pretend towards other with actions, they're starting to use their first words. As they're putting their actions together in sequence, they're starting to put words together into phrases. So these are language and play are developing in parallel and they both help each other. And this is really the foundation of cogn cognitive and social development and social communication. Now, in, in addition to the feeding, we can also see block construction and we see sequences. So we might start to see a child take some blocks, put them in a dump truck, roll the truck and then dump out the blocks at a building site. So we start to see this planning. So there's gradually more and more planning goal directed behavior as we move on up from conventional to pretending to the symbolic play. And then in preschool over 24 months on up to five years, kids then are getting into dramatic play. So that's where they can take on a role and imitate and pretend uh, and act out roles and they, uh, we see socio-dramatic play when they are um, engaging others in play and uh, cooperating in some sort of a make-believe scenario, which is like this, uh, this is Adam with his dad, he's around three years and they're pretending in, in the woods in their backyard around the canoe and they have props. <clears throat> So it's interesting to think about, you know, the relationship between talking and play. 
and other aspects of development, emotion, uh, emotional regulation, social uh, communication skills. Um, so, but, but let's go back to thinking about before babies even learn to talk, um, they're learning to use objects. So the, the objects in play actually create a critical foundation that propels or sets into motion the development of words along with some other skills like gestures and emotional regulation. So children, babies go from exploring objects to knowing how to use objects functionally in the first year of life, uh, from the first month on to up to about 12 months of age. And then we see them move into beginning to pretend in the second year. So here's a summary um, of really what I said. So kids are going uh, in the first six months, the body play, six to nine months, object exploration play, starts in the first couple months of life and then builds until 12 months when conventional object use is developing in that kind of nine to 15 months. And then they start to pretend with those actions, usually in that 12 to 14 months, and that builds and develops into the symbolic play sequences and then turns into dramatic play. And if you take a look at children's play, once they start using words, they're using words in play. So they're talking while they're playing, they're narrating and talking and interacting. So play also can create a great context for language development. So I wanna show you some resources at Baby Navigator that'll give you even more detail on the development of play. So this is our website, babynavigator.com. Um, I know that they're gonna to try to put some of these links that I've got on in the chat. So take a look at the chat and Melinda, I think this is my first link. I'm not sure how you're putting them up there. So as we kind of said, children learn about the world by playing with the people and objects around them. They have so much to learn when you think when they're born, they don't know what to do with anything. So they have to learn everything. And it's amazing how rapidly they learn to play and talk. Um, and although it doesn't always go smoothly. So this is one of our resources on Baby Navigators. We call it the Social Communication Growth Charts. It's a surveillance system. You can get to this if you go to Baby Navigator. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Um, and, and if you go to um, the left side, which is the magic side, you can, you'll can you see it'll say, learn the milestones that matter most. And if you click in this section, you'll see all these different number one to two. This is the months that you can click and see our milestones. And play is one of five domains of development. We also have a three pager and I gave Melinda a link uh, for this document. And you can get all these, you can poke around Baby Navigator, they're all there. So this shows you three pages of our milestones from one to two to 23 to 24 months. We have five domains of development. So I'm gonna focus on play, but what I want you to be aware of is that we have a whole set, a whole kind of curriculum for infants and toddlers before to, uh, that covers broadly social communication development. And it can be very handy to know these milestones. They're much more detailed than other milestones that are out there, um, which can help you detect really small delays. And that's our whole focus, catch small delays early so you can help kids catch up before they're really big delays. And then to piggyback on the talk that was before me, if you can start early and build social communication skills, you can prevent the development of challenging behaviors, at least some, all children have some challenging behaviors, but we can minimize them if we can start early. So play, um, each of our milestones has what we call two threads. Uh, and these are sort of uh, areas that interlace as this domain is developing. So we have using actions with objects and then social sharing. So just to be you know, thinking about children are learning what they're doing with objects, but they're also learning to use those objects to draw your attention and have fun with you, right? Because play is really about enjoyment. Uh, and so having fun and sharing that enjoyment. Um, so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna give this a try as quick as I can. Um, and I think I'm good on time to, um, and I end at 11, right? 10, 15, 11. Well, my time, I'm at Eastern. And uh, then we have questions. So I think I'm good. So we have two lookbooks at Baby Navigator on the magic side. When you go to the website, you'll see the magic side. And then the other side is what if you have concerns? And then there's a lot of information about autism resources. 
and language delay. So I want to share with you one of our lookbooks, and it's called 16 Actions with Objects. So we have two, 16 Gestures by 16 Months and 16 Actions with Objects. So I hope you'll check this out. I hope you'll share it. It's kind of fun, but it's really a way for me to teach you those very vivid pictures. Now I'm going to get more nuanced than the framework that I just presented. Now we're going to go into details with kind of a close-up lens of how play develops in infants and particularly focusing on nine to 16 months. So you're probably very familiar with toddlers and how, um, how active they can be. Toddlers are movers and shakers, always on the go, the go. They seek information about the world and experiment to figure out how things work. Their enthusiasm to share these experiences and accomplishments are contagious. So fun to be around toddlers. Babies are born as natural explorers. They're motivated to learn from birth. Their drive for learning comes from their fascination with everything that captures their attention. Uh, and so uh, research shows that children learn by doing and practicing. Discovering what they can do with objects leads to learning to talk and to pretend and that launches imagination. Children should be learning at least two new actions with objects each month from nine to 16 months. And then by 16 months, children should use at least 16 different actions with objects and then it grows from there. And keep in mind these actions that they're learning are cumulative. So they keep using them, but they become more and more sophisticated. So this is the beginning of how you do learn to do everything uh, that you do with your hands. So babies' earliest actions are when they begin to explore their bodies, they find their fingers and toes and suck on them. By six to eight months, babies learn to reach and take objects. They can hold and examine them using touch, taste, movement, and creating sound. So mouthing objects is still very common and we wanna make sure they have safe things to mouth because that's a big part of their exploration along with touching and uh, moving and watching. At nine months, so now we're going to start, nine months, babies repeat different actions with objects. They mouth objects to explore the features. They bang objects with their hand and bang two objects together to create sounds and actions. And they drop objects, sometimes by chance, and then they learn how to do it on purpose. And they love to find out what happens when they drop it and they hear sounds, it's a visual and audio experience, auditory. At 10 months, children start to take off and take out. So now they can start to help to take a piece of clothing like a hat or a shoe or a sock off. They grab and pull to take a towel off their head and play peekaboo. As they explore, they can count, you can count on them learning how to take toilet paper off the roll at some point. Um, you know, they're drawn to see what's in open drawers and take things out to explore. What an adventure to take everything out of the drawer. Uh, at 11 months, babies learn to push. So they can push and squish soft stuff like dough or push hard things like a piano key and make a musical sound with a little help from grandma. Um, and a button on a toy phone or a pop-up toy. So they, they're learning the cause effect of their actions and then the sounds <clears throat> or movements that are gonna happen. <coughs> they can push, so they push a toy train and make it move, or they might push a tower of cups to knock it down. Not yet ready to build the tower, but they can knock it down. At 11 months, babies learn to turn things so they can turn a ball on their toy mobile or the faucet in the tub. They can start to turn a page. Usually you wanna use a hard, book or a crinkly book, but this is a cute photo. And then they can turn a basket upside down and put it on their head to make you laugh. So we're just at 11 months, moving into 12 months. Babies learn to pat. They can pat themselves with a towel to dry off or pat their cloth on their uh, counter to try to wipe and clean something. And they can pat their teddy bear. And then this pat develops into a hug to share their love with you and their stuffed animals. At 12 months, babies are learning functional actions with a purpose in mind. They can put things in, so they can put clothes in the dryer or a shape in a puzzle. 
Um, then from that, they learn the put in, they learn a variety of functional actions. They can put a sippy cup in their mouth to drink and a spoon in a bowl to scoop and then try to get the spoon in their mouth to eat. And it's going to be a messy sensory experience. And that's all part of the exploration and learning. Now at 13 months, there's a big shift that happens, a good shift that happens. And again, in some children, this may happen later, but generally it's going to happen in this order. Children begin to learn by observing others and copying what they do and say. So babies now are watching, figuring out, deciding from what draws their attention to imitate what others are doing and saying. Uh, so this is how they learn. They begin to learn to feed mom with a cup. They've watched mom feed them, and now they do it back to mom, or they start to feed teddy bear with a bottle. And this shows that they're on the cusp of pretending. They are also learning some newer actions that are a little bit more goal-directed. So now they're combining two actions. Open. So at this age, they're starting to open and close objects, and they learn to use obje objects as tools. So they may try to open and close tongs or close pins. Uh, and now things are, could be potentially dangerous now that they can open and close. They can open and close cupboards, oven doors, and as they become more mobile, nothing is out of reach. So we really wanna warn parents with their growing repertoire of actions, beware they can open the oven door and take out a pan. And they can, driven by their interest to learn new things, they notice knobs to turn. So caution is needed if they turn on a burner. You can harness this interest by inviting them to do things that are safe and helpful, like opening the dishwasher and taking out forks and spoons with you um, guiding them and overseeing them. Potential danger ahead is they can turn a door handle to get outside to the yard and even out the gate. Keeping a toddler safe means being close by to monitor as they explore their world or and or securing things they can turn and open. Another shift then we see at 14 and 15 months, children are starting to use objects um, in sequence in a more deliberate way. So now they can start to use more functional actions. So at 14 months, they learn to move objects back and forth uh, like what they need to do with the toothbrush. So give them their turn to brush their teeth and then finish up by doing a thorough job. They're not going to do a thorough job, but they should be participating, brushing their hair, combing their hair. Um, and then they start to move objects back and forth. So they have toys that have wheels, they're moving back and forth, and they start to pretend they're vacuuming, which they've seen you do, try to roll a ball back and forth. Now, children younger may push the ball, right, or push a toy with wheels. But now what we're seeing is this back and forth. So if they're rolling it, they're expecting it back. Um, pushing objects back and forth. So it's a little more goal directed. And then as we get to 14 months, we also see, uh, we see move, moving objects back and forth as well as up and down. So children can start to help you with a lot of chores, like, tr like cooking, trying to help push a rolling pin back and forth, or you could be doing it with Play-Doh. Uh, learning to move objects up and down. And so they try to cut things with safe these are safe toys that they're pretending with a little fruit that comes apart and trying to cut an onion. Um, so real or pretend things with your supervision, but they start to have that up and down mo motion. So then we begin to see things like they can jiggle a pan with invisible stuff in it and they're moving that pan back and forth to jiggle it so that, so the actions then lead to more pretending. Uh, moving drumsticks up and down and experimenting with the sounds and rhythms that they're hearing. At 15 months, we see a new action that shows uh, children using two objects together. So I talked about them using two actions together. Now they can use two objects together. So I really look for this point and know we're at this 15 month milestone marker. So at 15 months, children are learning to use two objects together with a plan in mind. So they can pour from one object to another, from a bottle into a cup, they can now help you water the plants or they're gonna be playing with sand and they can scoop and, and then pour the sand once they get into the, pail, get into the pail or from the shovel into the pail. And then we see they can help in the kitchen and then we see lots of this in the bathtub, lots of opportunities throughout. They can pour from a cup into a bowl to help in the kitchen 
a cup into a container while playing in the bathtub. And now they can do more chores with a plan in mind. They can help wash and dry the dishes and even help wash and dry the car. Toddlers are eager for a role in family chores. They actually see this all as play. So now's the time to grow your good citizens when they're infants and toddlers to help you. 16 months then, children are beginning to use objects in a way that's showing the beginning of emergent literacy and, and we see these sequences in play. So now with blocks, they could put on, put one block on um, when they were 11, 12 months. But now at 16 months, what we see is they have a plan in mind. So this is their symbol use in their mind. They want to build a tower. And so now we see more than just put one block on, we see them working to build a tower. So they've got this plan in their mind that they're reenacting in their play with blocks. And then we see that build on up to a bigger tower and more sophisticated things that they're able to put together. And then this grows into um, being able to, they can do other actions like cutting things out. So now they can use cookie cutters and push with your guidance to make cookies. And they can even make pretend little creatures um, by cutting apart and putting things in. So all actions that they've learned, but now they're putting them together to create a product a creature, a product, a tower, or a product, a drawing. So children are learning how to create drawings. They can scribble with a crayon and paint, uh, and they can paint with a paintbrush or their hands. Um, and so they're starting to have in their mind what uh, putting something on a paper to try to represent it on the paper. That's the symbolic thought. And so as they're doing this in play, they're learning to talk. This is setting into motion, learning to talk. And then with a little help and practice, this child's probably over 16 months, they try to draw with colored pencils. So the drawing and spreading the drawing out on the paper and then making the drawing more and more realistic so you know what they're drawing is their development of um, really emergent literacy because then it turns into writing letters and writing their name. So that's the beginning foundation, which is critical to learning to read and write and do well in school. So to sum up, watching how a child's action, actions with their objects, watching what they're doing with objects tells you a lot about their development in play. So just observing children's play should give you a pretty good indication of what developmental level, and that kind of corresponds with the developmental age, that they are in symbolic thought, in pretend play, in play, in using actions, and whether or not you should be concerned. Uh, so if children are not yet talking, but if their play is on target for their age, then you're, you can be a little bit less concerned. If their gestures are on target for their age, then you can be even less concerned. So we always want to monitor but um, sometimes just using the words is a little late to come in. But what we want to make sure is that play is coming in and gestures and other domains that we have in our social communication growth charts. So the, the actions a child learns vary depending on their family and culture, what they're exposed to. But having 16 actions with objects by 16 months is a critical milestone for all children because it launches imagination and that fuels and sets into motion language learning. Um, by their second birthday, children learn to use words and phrases to describe, inquire, and negotiate with others. And it's this ability to talk, imagine, and create new ideas that sets the stage for lifelong learning. Uh, and the richest moments for early language learning are when a child and caregiver share attention on the same thing. And the caregiver talks about the child's focus of attention. This creates opportunities to learn that stem from actions with objects um, and gestures. So by observing these early actions with objects and gestures between nine and 16 months, you can get a critical snapshot of what a child is, knows and what they're thinking about. Uh, if a child's not using a variety of actions with objects or uh, the gestures from nine to 16 months, then the parent may not have the chance to respond and follow the child's focus and this limits the child's opportunity for the richest moments to learn to talk. 
So the child may actually be in a language deprived environment because they're not giving the child the cues and signals. Uh, they're not giving their parent, their caregiver, the cues and signals that the, the, that the caregiver needs to model language for the child. And so it's the child drawing us in with their actions and gestures. And then we talk about what they're looking at and doing that is what sets learning to talk into motion. So if their play or gestures are behind, then that can lead to a language delay or can re reflect or be related to. So the key is spotting small gaps in early actions with objects and gestures from nine to 16 months is the best time to get ready for preschool so children can reach their potential by kindergarten. So if we can catch the, the play gap or the gesture gap way before uh, we wait for the word gap, which may not show up until they're two or even older. So we have a document called the glimpse of, so this is what I went over. Here's your little glimpse of how it all comes in. And there's a link that I hope that Melinda will share. And we also have a four pager that she has the link to that you can download, which, but I hope you go to the actual lookbook and flip through it. It looks really good on an iPad. Um, but the four pager is nice. It kind of goes over, it's pretty much everything that I read to you is on the four pager, but the glimpse is handy. So I hope you learned all these little nuances. What I want to do now in the time I have left is show a couple of video clips. And what we'll do is look at the clips and I want you, I don't know if, if, if you can chat in, I invite you to chat in and I want you to describe, really just describe the actions the child's doing with their hands. And then we can talk about how is their play look for their age. Um, but I wanna make a really important point. So we think of play, when we say play, we think of toys, but the activities that parents do every day with their child has many, many objects. Many activities have many objects. Think about bath time, meals and snacks, diaper change. Um, and when we think about meals and snacks, preparation, eat, sharing the meal, and then cleaning up. There's so many objects that are around all of these everyday activities that offer great opportunities <clears throat> for babies to learn how to use actions with objects. And then the names of these objects and actions. So you don't, we don't need to encourage parents to buy a lot of toys because all around them are objects that children can learn from and learn to pretend and can launch imagination. So we really, and a lot of toys, you know, toys that have batteries in general are not so good for promoting pretending. So save your money. So I just wanna show you a couple photos. These are from children that we worked in in our early treatment study. You know, certainly sharing books is a great opportunity and you can have puppets or objects that go with the books and then talking about the context of new things that children learn in books, but also everyday activities like checking the mail. So think about, well, I'm gonna just talk you through these actions and I want you to do it as we watch videos. So first open, right? This comes in real early. So you could carry um, a little baby out to the mailbox and the baby could open or close the mailbox. Get, so you might have to help them a little to get the take out and then have them carry it. Obviously you have to monitor closely. And then there's a card to open. So now you have an emergent literacy activity of going to get the mail. So those are incredible language learning opportunities that happen every day. We wanna help parents um, facilitate their support of learning in their babies in all these moments that come up. I love this one because we want everybody to be green. So think about this action. What he's actually doing is dropping. This comes in at nine months. So your babies can help uh, with recycling, collecting things to put in the recycling bin. And then when they're big enough to walk with you to help carry it out, and then we're dumping it in. So again, it's kind of a throw or a drop. They can help water. Remember the pouring comes in at 14 months. So um, 14 to 15 months. So now you, they can help you with the gardening. And it's really nice to have a miniature, a little object that they can handle while you're doing your chores with the re real size object. So let's look at a couple of videos and then I'll open it up for questions. Uh, okay, is everything good in terms of technology? You're seeing, hearing? Okay. Yes, things look great. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, um, see how far we can get. Um, these are a combination of typical kids and a couple of kids with delay or autism. So I think it'll be pretty obvious now that you've learned what should come in when. 
So I want you to chat in. Uh, if is that okay to do? Have them chat in. So them. right now we have the chat box disabled, and oh, so, okay. um, but they it, it might get a little bit wild if we um, okay if we have them put it in the Q and A. So, so just, yeah, just jot it down or think yeah. it in your head because you have some odd thoughts. Does that sound good? I think that's so, perfect. Yeah, and then kind of think about then is this how, does this look good for twenty months? So here's Charlie at twenty months. These are all in the CSBS. It's a semi-structured um, uh, observation where we, uh, it's a standardized tool where we evaluate social communication development, which includes play. So we have a feeding set you're gonna see all these kids in just to kind of keep the context simple. So this is Charlie and the mom is on this side of the child and the diagnostician's over here. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's coffee. It's coffee. Mm. Oh, thank you. Coffee in your bundle. <laughs> So I hope you understood what he said, but we crack up at this, that he offered them coffee in the bottle. <laughs> so he's trying to say coffee and mom's a coffee drinker. So she thought that was really funny. Eat, eat. Charlie, eat. What are you gonna eat? Mm, what is it? Bird, eat. Bird, eat. Thank you. It's more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it? Eat, eat. Mm. Okay, and the sharing. So uh, if, if you thought about the actions, uh, if we think about the categories, so he's using objects functionally, and that comes in around 12 by 12 months, but he's also using them and pretend toward both the diagnostician and his mom, and he's putting actions in sequence. So he's pretending toward them and Big Bird, and he's putting the actions in sequence. And if we brought the second set as the cooking set, he would probably do even more. So he's scooping from one to the other and then feeding Big Bird, feeding himself, and then offered the bottle. So we're seeing nice sequences of actions. And for 20 months, that is spot on. But we're also seeing this beautiful shared enjoyment. So let's take a look at the next. Okay, and if you have questions, um, I guess they're going to be gathering them at some point. They will let you, and then we'll we'll end it. We'll stop watching at in about ten minutes, and then we'll take questions. So I want you to try to think up yourself, and then I'll I'll let you know. So as you're watching, jot down or think up what actions are you seeing. This is Jared, right around the same age. So think about what is he doing with his hands, and then what's he paying attention to. Same situation. So you can play imitate what he does. So you can play together like a piece of stir. Oh, stir. Yeah. stir. Just try not to show him how you do oh, anything okay. until he does okay. it. Yeah. What is this? Ooh. We know this is. Mm. And we watched all of this. Nah, nah. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. But always go in the mouth. Hi, Jared. I'm your friend, Big Bird. try this real quick as we watch. Um, so hopefully you were noticing the first thing is the spoon. He's really putting it in and out of the cup. So he's banging, putting it in and out. So that's more an object exploration. Um, he could, it could turn into a conventional object use, but because it's up and down. So we would expect if he's scooping a little bit of an angle 
and that's coming in before 12 months. And then we see him bring the bottle to his mouth. And I think he'll do that again. So that's now conventional object use towards self, which gets him up to the 12 month level. And then he hugs big bird. So that pat that comes in turns into a hug. So that's 13 months. So that hug big bird. And uh, he seems to see big bird as a pretend toy. And he's looking at his features. So he's doing a lot of physical object exploration of the features. And then he does feed himself. And then after a lot of support, and this is where the support is so important, the clinician models, and then she invites mom to model and mom has this big open mouth. And so he then puts it in the mouth. So at 13 months, children are starting to observe and imitate. So he's really not much past a 13 month level. So he's 21 months. So this is really delayed play, even though it might look just fine, it's not. It's really delayed by our actions. If you really look at what he's doing, okay? And he ends up, we follow these children into school age, being a child with a learning disability and a preschool language disorder. So he, what we see in children with language disorder and his speech and language are also both delayed at this age. We're starting to see the play is a little bit delayed and the speech and language are usually further delayed than the play. And he also has a lot of comprehension problems. So they're telling him things, but he's not necessarily understanding what. So that's a good example of, um, of a developmental delay, which ends up being a language delay and learning disability. So now let's take a look at Jimmy at 15 to 16 months. And I just threw in our, our milestones. So remember we have social communication milestones that are in more detail than the lookbooks are kind of these broad brush strokes of the actions that are coming in. The milestones in the play domain, this is under using actions with objects. Jimmy for his age should be, I can use pretend play actions with objects that have imagined things from everyday activities. So let's take a look and see what Jimmy's doing. And again, look at his actions and think about the age that these come in and what's the most sophisticated thing he's doing. Taking some breakfast. Some eggs. Yeah, he has eggs. 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 Yeah. Stir up the eggs. Is it hot? So again, it's the fun, it's the pretense, the fun of pretending that Jimmy is having really a lot of fun with. So again, think about the language learning environment. So the, the diagnostician is basically teaching him to blow on the hot food and he's following it. So he's really, there's no food in there. So he is pretending to blow on the hot food with the support of the clinician. And so that's beautiful. But thinking about his actions, he poured and then he did pretend during this play. So he's looking right on for 15 to 16 months. Um, and this is hard for me because usually I have more interaction with the chat. So hopefully you're following. We're doing good, Kristen. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple more quick clips. Yeah, things are going great. Okay, so now let's take a look at Ryan who's a little bit older. What is he doing with his hands and paying attention to? Mm. 
Okay. So this child, I'm confident that you're noticing, is way behind on play. So we're seeing, although he's 20 months, he's really doing primarily object exploration. He's exploring to see what is this going to do when I put it upside down. And then when I roll it, he's pushing it, which makes it roll. So he pushes, he turn, uh, knocks things down and rolls them, uh, and he turns them upside down. He is scared of big birds. So that was an interesting reaction. So um, he may not have experiences or know what that is, but he is afraid. What's nice to see is that he requests comfort to mom by grabbing her and backing into her. Um, and then we see again with the lid, he's taking it on and off and turning it over. So, and then he wobbles it. So we're not seeing any functional object use. There's a little, a little inkling of turning over the pan. When once the clinician models, he is watching. Um, and then he does take the end, he turns over, but then, and he's wobbling, uh, but then he does take the end of the spatula. So that may be a little bit of imitation of what she was doing. Um, so that to me, it, it shows his potential. So this ends up being a child that was diagnosed right at 20 months after this sample with autism. And you see also his striking lack of social communication, lack of gestures, flat affect. Uh, and so all of that collectively are early signs of autism and what he's doing in play. And he is behind on the pretend play and the social sharing. All right, I wanna wrap up with two little ones. I just wanna play real quickly. Um, just I'm gonna play like 30 seconds of each. So let's look at, this is Hannah at 13 months. So right away, we're gonna see the pat. And then the hugging, nice hug. And then we see, you know, she turns it over, but briefly and moves on to using the objects conventionally and pretends big bird. So she's right on for her age, 13 months. And she, I think she feeds, okay? So the beginning, she's on the cusp. So let's end with Jalen. And what is he doing with his hands? He's the same age as Hannah. Oh, no, 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 no. There's a cup, nothing in him, just pretend. And Big Bird, does he play with stuffed animals at all, Wendy? Mm -mm. Okay, he's a Big Bird. He has a bad ah. little but he just more so throws it. <laughs> he doesn't really hold on to it or... Uh oh That's what he does with every cut. He no, turns it on the side and he rolls it. So we're seeing banging. So mom is like, I don't know if that's going to do well. Joking. Kind of dropping, so, which is how they learn. Time to eat. Time to eat. Big Bird's hungry, too. Want to eat some food? Munchy, crunchy, munchy, crunchy. We're just seeing banging and dropping and then putting in. So these are all actually that, food? Just that are coming in from 12, um, nine to 12 months, right? He's not doing the conventional yet, but he's doing the object exploration. And so he's banging, dropping, and then the dropping makes things wobble and then the kids learn how to wobble. So he also was ended up diagnosed with autism. So let's open it up for questions. Um, I've got, I wanted to, you know, refer you to Autism Navigator. We have lots of resources. It wasn't the focus of my discussion today, but just want you to know about our website. You, uh, you can just Google Autism Navigator and make sure you know about our webinars. One of them I do with uh, Kristen. So we have nine different webinars you can find out about on our website, if you want to learn more about early detection of autism, I believe it's tomorrow. But when you click on the button, you'll find the details and you can register. All our webinars are free. These are for families and the public. These are more for professionals getting into and social communication development. We have a six-week series that we repeat on development. Mm -hmm.